Hello and welcome to Bicode. In this video, we are going to have a proper discussion about bulk RNA sequencing versus single RNA sequencing. So the difference between these two top transcriptomics approaches is that even though they are similar in terms of their names, but they are vastly different. So let's go through them one by one. So before uh, delving into the bulk RNA sequencing versus single RNA sequencing, what we need to know about is why do we actually need these two different technologies to analyze the same molecule which is RNA so a tissue has multiple cells at the same time that are working for their own functionalities for example at a single location there could be multiple immune cells there could be multiple tissue cells that are performing different functions and when a disease occurs in that particular tissue that particular region of a particular tissue it leads to further gene expression changes on the cellular level which change the overall topology shape and functionality of that particular function so this is known as tumor heterogeneity if it is a cancer tissue heterogeneity in terms of normal uh, normal discussion and cellular heterogeneity if we are talking about a normal tissue that has multiple cells and they are performing multiple different functions so on these three figures what we can see is that in a particular tumor there are this is a primary tumor for uh, suppose for a breast cancer and there are two different types of cells this is a tumor subclone for that has mutation a and mutation b and this is particular other population the cell that has mutation a b and c so what it would mean is that even though it is a part of the same tissue they are different in terms of their gene genome and expression so why is why i said gene genome because gene has expression and whereas the genome could have mutation as we are talking about driver mutations so these different populations even though they are at present at the same location they can have vastly different functionalities vastly different uh, characteristics in terms of cellular dis description and they have more probable we can then make a probabilistic approach to identify which cells in terms of tumor which cells have more like more likelihood to metastate to stay benign or into that particular tissue as we can see from here they were able to assess that this particular subpopulation of the tumor has more chances of metastating to a different region even though this was a primary tissue primary tumor tissue and if you see in the c figure we can see there are still some population a available in this tumor so at the end of the discussion what we understand from this figure is that a single tumor a single tissue can have multiple cellular populations and those multiple cellular populations perform their own multiple functions based on their gene expression profile and these gene expression profiles can be changed due to disease or other stress related factors so if we are talking about intratumor heterogeneity that means within a single tumor there is a heterogeneity there are multiple tumor associated subpopulations that are performing different functionalities and when we talk about intratumor heterogeneity we are talking about comparing one tissue which is a tumor against another tissue which also would be a tumor but we are only comparing them together in terms of their average rather than discussing cellular level differences and if we want to understand the cellular level differences we can do that through intratumor heterogeneity analysis not not through intratumor heterogeneity analysis so suppose that we have taken a sample from uh, one patient from a brain he has brain cancer and we have taken that sample and now we are comparing this sample against a sample that was obtained from a normal individual this is known as intertumor heterogeneity. We can do that within same patient as well. For, for example, selecting a sample from the normal part of the brain. But that is like you are comparing one tissue against the other tissue. But if you want to compare a tissue within itself, 
how the cells are differentiated in terms of their gene expression profiles or even mutations you can do that as well so this is where it becomes very crucial when a tumor is actually growing or it is even starting there is a progress of a tumor there is a progress of a disease there is a possibility of effect that there could be multiple types of cells multiple different types of immune cells or multiple different types of biological other cells that are present normally so there could be multiple immune cells as well for example tumor associated macrophages cancer associated fibroblast cancer stem cells dendritic cells cd8 cells cd4 cells etc etc so it depends largely on the location of the tumor location of the disease and what we are trying to understand so it is quite possible that all almost all of the disease may have at any given moment multiple immune cells multiple normal cells as well so we want to understand if there is a tumor what kind of cells are there if they are normal if they are normal if they are immune cells if they are immune related uh, macrophages or, or they are immune related cancer cells they are tumor cells that sort of information has to be understood now that because each disease it is differentiated in terms of their expression profile and in terms of their subpopulation so at a single given location even though a person who develops a lung cancer or a lung disease even though they have one single disease maybe it is possible that they have cell subpopulations that are performing various different functionalities of that one original disease okay okay so we will continue and tumor tissue and cellular heterogeneity would mean that there are multiple types of cells present at any given moment in a single tissue and if a tissue becomes a cancerous becomes a tumor tissue becomes a disease tissue then it is more likely that they it is going to develop various different further types of cells based on its gene expression profile and these gene expression profiles can be elucidated using various different techniques which are which i am going to discuss further so at any given moment for example this is the best cancer illustration a sample has been taken and these are the cells various different cells that are expressing various different gene expression profiles and we can then ascertain okay at any given moment in breast cancer there are multiple different types of breast cancer subpopulations of breast cancer and then we can devise a therapy or therapeutic target from those subpopulations for example you are just caring about one side of the tumor as you can see over here gene c b d this means that th this population expresses these genes more as compared to the other side of the tumor which expresses gene a or e so now we can we have more uh, idea if we talk about the cellular heterogeneity or tumor heterogeneity we we now get more idea that how we can target these different subpopulations of a particular disease so to understand these cellular heterogeneities or this disease heterogeneity or tumor heterogeneity or tissue heterogeneity what we need to do is we need to devise a protocol so earlier when we used to do bulk rna sequencing bulk rna sequencing does not deal with tumor heterogeneity intertumor uh, intratumor heterogeneity or inter disease heterogeneity why is that because in bulk rna sequencing what used to happen was that we would take a sample from one individual and then we take another sample from either that individual or someone else that would be normal or control and we would compare these together in terms of their expression profile and we would get average expression profile of all the cells there that are present between this tissue all the genes that are present in all the cells present within this tissue and we would take a average of that and then compare to all the genes present in all the cells present in this entire tissue so in the, by the end of this analysis by the end of the bulk rna sequencing protocol what we get is gene expression profile that is averaged over all the cells on the entire tissue 
so this would not give us uh, the actual gene expression profile of each individual cell which we have established in the previous slides that each individual cell has various different functionalities and various different gene expression profile as we saw here over here that each cell can express one or the other gene expression profile based on its use cases based, based on its own requirements so bulk RNA sequencing cannot help us with that so this is where single single cell sequencing comes into play its role and this is where single cell sequencing allows us to do cellular heterogeneity analysis tumor heterogeneity analysis where we can identify cellular expression gene expression of each individual cell in a given tissue at any given moment so if we see over here we can see that we have taken sample from a solid tissue and these are the cells and these cells will be dissected one by one and each given cell from this entire tissue each given cell will be used to extract rna from there and this rna will be converted into cdna and further library we will discuss about this in more detail later on but each cell will be used to extract the rna and each rna will be converted into cdna and then they will be amplified sequencing library will be created using umis barcodes and then sequencing will be done and this is where we perform cluster so by the end of the single cell rna sequencing protocol we have gene expression profile or at least fastq files or raw data files for each single cell of an entire tissue and then we cluster and then we identify the cell types so compared to the bulk RNA sequence we were only getting the average of of all the cells over the entire tissue but in single cell we are getting rna from each cell that can be used to quantify the expression profile of each cell so that each cell can be compared to the other each cell in terms of their expression so now we get gene expression for example gene brca1 we can get expression profile of brca1 in each given cell of the entire tumor tissue so in terms of a bulk RN sequencing pipeline and single cell uh, RNA sequencing pipeline you can see that in both cases we have heterogeneous tissue by the way I just want to make it clear we, in both cases we have heterogeneous tissue and from in bulk RNA sequencing <coughs> sorry in bulk RNA sequencing we get total RNA which is then converted into cDNA sequencing is performed bulk, bulk expression data is gained and we can get gene expression profile of gene X either it is upregulated or downregulated in single cell RNA sequencing we get heterogeneous tissue we get single cell barcoded DNA from each given cell sequencing is performed for each given cell and then we can perform clustering to identify cell populations cell subpopulations or cell clustering and then from there we can identify gene X expression for each given cell as you can see cell type A cell type B and cell type C so they have identified gene expression for cell type B first and then gene X in cell type C so this is how we can identify cellular expression in genes in terms of genes in all the cells and average them out using bulk or get cellular level dis differences using single cell technologies okay so what is the difference in terms of analysis for both of these technologies in single cell RNA sequencing we get a mixture of cells that is heterogeneous distribution of, of each gene across population of cells is done by the way this is the most crucial factor of this entire comparison in single cell we we care about the distribution of each dif distribution of expression of each gene across the population of cells in a tissue characterization of cells and their expression profiles is done cell specific changes for heterogeneity is done in single cell sequencing we can also then uh, do differential gene expression analysis we can do rare cell type identification such as those cells that are that play crucial role in embryo uh, development cells rna is taken from each cell under study so if from here you can see each cell under study there are multiple different cells at any given moment in a given tissue that is working differently even though they are part of the same disease so in bulk RNA sequencing we get a mixture of cells also from heterogeneous tissue same as single cell sequencing but we get average expression of each gene across population of cells we can only 
characterize expression situations no countability of heterogeneity among cells we cannot do heterogeneity using bulk sequencing cannot study complex dynamical biological environments for example we cannot understand the the over time behavior behavior of the data of the genes of the expression but we can do that in single cell sequencing we will see that in the further videos and total rna from each cell is taken under study and then every it is averaged out by the end of the analysis and if in the if we see in the given figure we can see that each tumor is compared to the other tumor rather than within itself okay what is the difference in terms of bioinformatics pipeline so, so of course we have to do an analysis at, at the end of uh, getting the sample sets from the individuals so in terms of bioinformatics pipeline single cell rna sequencing analysis is vastly different from bulk rna sequencing analysis the tools however can be utilized more or less similar tools can be utilized but both pipelines are vastly vastly different so i will start with